A fairy godmother, a dust wife, and a bone dog walk into a bar. Welcome to the book nook. <laughs> hey -o. So today we're going to talk about the book Nettle and Bone by T. King Fisher. And this is my first experience of T. King Fisher. I feel like I'm a little behind on this one because, I don't know, I feel like everyone's talking about T. King Fisher right now and I'm slow. So I'm just now getting on the bandwagon, guys. Also looking forward to What Moves a Dead that comes out in July. It is July now. So this month. So this book is a story of a girl named Mara, who is a princess. She has two other sisters, her oldest sister, Damia, and then her middle sister, Kania, and then herself. There's a prince who is, uh, freaking horrible. That's what he is. So, you know, he's garbage. <laughs> and back in the day, the kingdoms all marry off their daughters so they can make alliances and, you know, make sure this kingdom doesn't attack us and this, that, and the other. So the queen marries off her daughter to this horrible Prince Vorling. She gets pregnant with her first child, but then she ends up dying. It was an accident. She fell off a horse. Of course, that happens. And then they're like, well, well, uh, you know, here's our other daughter, the middle daughter, Kania. They marry her off to this Prince of Orling and she gets pregnant. You know, obviously the prince, he wants an heir. This is how these things work. So she ends up having a girl and when uh, she's having the kid, they, they call the royal family. So the queen and her, her youngest sister, at some point when she's in, in childbirth and then the mother like steps away for a minute, Kenya's like, don't let them, don't let them get involved with any of this if I die and, and whatnot. Um, Cause you know, she alludes to the fact that the prince is a big POS. Oh, and, and Mara <laughs> had been sent off to a convent because this prince didn't want her marrying off to someone else and getting pregnant and getting an heir before them who might have claim to the throne because you know, he's, he's really great. So she's there while her sister gives birth. And she kind of like fluffs it off like, oh, people say really weird stuff when they're having kids because they're in severe pain. So they're screaming that they hate this person and that person. So she doesn't really believe it. So Mara currently doesn't know or believe that Prince Vorling is just horrible. But it's a girl. So, you know, they're going to keep trying to have babies until a son is born. And then at some point, Mara learns that... She sees these marks on her sister's arm and she finds out that, yeah, this prince is actually hurting her. So now she's like, what the F? Samara so decides this mf -er needs to go down. This prince needs to die. So she takes it upon herself because no one else is going to do it. Like she tells her mother and her mother's like, well, you know, the kingdoms, oh. We gotta do it for us so we don't get attacked. Uh, screw, you know, she's a strong girl, whatever. And it's like, and apparently when she's pregnant, he doesn't bother her. He doesn't like try to abuse her as much. Anyway, so Mara takes it upon herself that she's gonna go kill this prince. And she's like, how, how am I gonna do this? And she finds out about a dust wife. And a dust wife is kind of like um, someone who has magic and, and different stuff. You got a problem, maybe she'll help take care of it. So she goes, and she finds this dust wife and this dust wife gives her three impossible tasks and they are one to make a cloak out of nettle and owl cloth and nettle if you've ever touched a stinging nettle i accidentally brushed my foot up against one before you guys it's like fire pain needles and so she has to knit a cloak out of this so imagine what that's going to do with her hands like continuously making a big giant cloak so that secondly she needs to make a dog out of bones that comes to life. And third, to capture moonlight in a jar. So those are her three impossible tasks. And when she does that, she will gain the tools to go kill a prince. She ends up doing these tasks. And on the way, they pick up this cast of characters that comes with us. So you have Bone Dog and you have the, the Dust Wife. And then they go and they find her fairy godmother. Because the, there's fairy godmothers and they bless the children of the royals. And then they also, at some point, they go to the goblin market. 
which is a very <laughs> mysterious and creepy place, and they need to go find help to kill this horrible prince. So while they're there, they pick up some stuff that they need, and then they also find this this man, Fenris. And I swear to God, like I kept waiting for him to turn into a werewolf because his name is Fenris, and I kept thinking, you know, Fenrir, who is the wolf in Norse mythology, one of Loki's children, but. Does he turn into a werewolf? I don't know. You'll have to read the book to find out. So they all go on this journey to go and bring this prince down. But he's his freaking fairy godmother had blessed him so that magic cannot touch his family. So they cannot magically do it. So they have to figure out a way to get in the castle, get by all these people, get around this magic, and try and take this prince down. If Mara's sister has a boy, he will probably, you know, take the kid and then kill her. So they're in a race of time because she does, you know, obviously she ends up getting pregnant with the boy and the birth's gonna happen. And so what happens in this whole journey, and it was so freaking good. And it's not a fairy tale retelling of sorts, but it feels like it. And it has, I think, a lot of the lore tied in and like, you know, with the goblin market. But yeah, T. King Fisher. Everybody's talking about T. King Fisher. This book was great. So if you kind of like, fairy tale style fantasy books. It wasn't super long. I think it was like 200 something plus pages. I had to return it to the library so I don't have the physical book with me currently. I would highly recommend it. I gave this book four stars. Just, it was a great adventure. It was dark. It was also light. The characters are fun. There's some weird stuff they run into on the way and it's just quite the journey. So Nettle and Bone by T. King Fisher. Also, if you do like fantasy books, coming up next after this video, I will have another fantasy review of sorts right here. So thank you everyone for joining me in the book nook today. If you had fun hanging out, boop that like button, come back, see me again, and we'll talk about more books and weird stuff. So until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.